Well, this is about all we're going to do with our board tonight is push it up here just to remind us what we've been talking about. Take your Bibles and turn back to uh, John chapter 15. It's really good to see everybody here tonight. Okay, well, how, how have we been kind of summing up? The heart of God is God's vision. God's vision for building his kingdom. Yeah. And the strategies are what? That's right, how God aims to fulfill his vision for his kingdom. Are we involved in God's vision? Yeah, absolutely, because we are what? Abiders. Who else is God going to use to fulfill his vision for his kingdom? Who else is God going to use besides abiders? Dyers. But abiders... And dyers are the same. Yeah, yeah. So abiders are dyers. Dyers are abiders. So this is it, guys. God, God will use no one else to build his kingdom other than abiders and dyers. And last Wednesday night, we spent some time in John 15 because it is the premier chapter. It's not the only place. Uh, that talks about abiding in Christ, but it is the premier chapter in God's Word that teaches what it is to be an abider in Christ. And we're just going to read real quick back through that, and we're going to look at some more passages because uh, we got to talking about fruit last Wednesday night, which is a key component. Uh, really, how you have, it's really how you identify who true abiders are is by the fruit. So let's read, starting at verse 1, we'll read uh, back to verse 11. We're going to look at some more of John 15 tonight, but that's all we'll read. John chapter 15, verse 1. Everybody there say amen. Sandra, you there? You're looking in the back of your Bible. You're... Mike, is Mike giving you no notes? He's flirting with you. Mike, cut it out, would you? He got his own, okay. All right. Here we go, verse 1. I am the true vine, Jesus says. And my father's the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes so that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As much, I'm sorry, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. So neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up and they gather them, cast them into the fire. They are burned. If you abide in me and my word abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciple. Just as the Father has loved me, I also love you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you so that my joy may be made in you, or my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be made full. Now, <clears throat> obviously, fruit is a key component of being an abider. Obviously, as he says, when you produce fruit, let me back up, sorry, when you bear fruit, when you bear fruit, you, according to Scripture, you do what? You prove that you are what? A disciple. I remember, guys, we said this last Wednesday. When we ask these questions, the answer's not in your head. The answer's where? In Scripture. So when we ask these questions, just go ahead. I'm not going to ask you a question uh, that you can't answer, usually. Sometimes I'll throw one in. But when we ask these questions, just so we will learn from Scripture, answer them from Scripture. Uh, so... John says, hey, when you produce fruit or when you bear fruit, you prove to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Abiders are disciples as well. So, now, the word fruit, 
We have a tendency to make that word maybe more potent than it is or maybe say things that it don't say because Josh come up with a really good phrase last Wednesday night when he asked this question. What was the question, Josh? Is there a common fruit amongst abiders? And I thought about that. I asked Josh to think about that today, and I asked uh, someone else to think about it. Have you thought about it today, Josh? Nope. Okay, good answer. He didn't think about it. Well, I did because I didn't figure Josh would. Uh, no, I did. There is common fruit. Matter of fact, the fruit that is bore from abiders really is common in so many ways. Now, when we think of that word fruit, what do you think of? When, when we read in Scripture that if we abide in Christ and he abides in us, we will bear much fruit, what does that fruit look like in your mind? Okay, that's what it looks like. Okay, what else? I'm sorry? Can't hear you. Godliness, okay. Knowledge, knowledge, and hearing aids, right? Yeah, knowledge and hearing aids. What else? Discipleship, it's a good one. Anything else? Being a witness, okay, that's good. Obedience. Eddie, you got anything? Okay, just thought I'd check. Doing stuff for God's kingdom. Now, that's really the answer that I thought I would get a lot of. Uh, I, and uh, Bryce, I'm sorry? Are we not the fruit? Well, he doesn't prune the fruit. He prunes the what? The branch. And the branch, watch the fruit, bears it. So, no, we're not the fruit. We bear the fruit. We're the branch, right. I, I, I'm really proud of you guys for the answers that you gave because I really thought, and I really still think, most people think along the lines that Josh did. And I think Josh was just being the devil's advocate there. He really didn't. Don't think that way, do you? Yeah, you do, you rascal. I think most people, including me, I, I find myself falling this trap. When we think about fruit, we think about doing stuff, doing stuff like preaching and mission work, and, and, and that is fruit, isn't it? But I think, and maybe I'm just a lone horse on this, but I think I have a tendency to always think that away, that, that bearing fruit is always doing stuff. That's kind of my thought. So when I hear answers like I just did from this side, praise the Lord for that, because bearing fruit is much more than doing stuff. It's more than that. And what I want to do is I want us to look at some scripture and try to come to uh, a, a conclusion in our mind of what bearing fruit really looks like. How many of you think bearing fruit's important? <laughs> it is the important thing for abiders to do. So take your Bibles and turn to Matthew chapter 3. And let's look at this interaction that Jesus has. Uh, actually, it's John with the Pharisees. What did I say? Yeah. I said Matthew then, John? Okay, well, we'll get to John. Just go to Matthew now. Guys, don't make this hard now. <laughs> Let's don't make this difficult, guys. Just listen to me. That's all you got to do. <laughs> Matthew chapter 3. Did I really say John? Okay, I, I believe you, Miss Cindy. Okay. All right, so let's look at verse 1 of chapter 3. I know Ricky will trip me up and have fun doing it, so i got to watch him. All right, verse 1, chapter 3 in Matthew, by the way. Does I say Matthew? Okay, Matthew. Verse 1, now in those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is the one referred to by Isaiah the prophet when he said, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, make ready the way of the Lord, make, make his path straight. 
Now, John himself had a garment of camel hair, leather belt, all that jazz. Let's skip to verse 7 because we know what John looked like. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers who warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Now watch this. Therefore, bear fruit in keeping with repentance. Isn't that a catchy phrase? Bear fruit in keeping with repentance. So what is he saying there? True repentance, what? Causes you to bear fruit. Yeah. Now I want you to, I want you to latch hold of that word bear. I want you to keep that bear. Ma'am, does your Bible say produce? What kind of, that's interesting. What kind of Bible you got? Seriously. It's a holy Bible. Yes. Sandra's got a holy Bible. Oh, my goodness. It's a what? NIV. Okay. All right. And holy. And holy. Way to go, Sandra. Somehow I knew Sandra was going to say it's a holy Bible. So John says to these Pharisees, bear fruit in keeping with repentance, okay? Let's look at Matthew chapter 7. It gets gooder and gooder. Matthew chapter 7. This is our Lord talking now. Uh, let's start at verse 15. Does that sound good to y'all? Jesus says, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their what? Uh -huh. That's interesting, isn't it? You will know false prophets by their fruits. Hmm. Grapes are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor figs from thistles, are they? Verse 17, so every good tree, every good tree bears good fruit. But the bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, nor can a bad tree produce good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. By the way, almost every passage you read where it's talking about bearing fruit always adds that, that the, 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 the tree or the branch or whatever it's referring to that does not bear fruit, it's always thrown away or thrown into the fire. And the reason it is because this is always the destruction of unbelievers. Always in these fruit-bearing analogies that's used in Scripture, the ones who do not bear fruit are the ones who are unconverted. They are unsaved. And therefore, their final end is they're destroyed in the lake of fire. Just so you'll know that. Because in verse 6, we actually didn't get to that last Wednesday night. There was a question asked about that, and I realized it today. It's funny how my mind works, but we really didn't get to that last Wednesday and get around to answering that question. We'll, we'll get back to it over in John 15. But every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So then you will know them by their fruits. Now watch this. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Hmm, not that interesting? Because saying something doesn't prove discipleship, does it? What does? Stick with the Bible, guys. Fruit, remember? Fruit proves discipleship. So there's going to be people that stands before the Lord and says, Lord, Lord, and they won't enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father, who is in heaven, will enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast out demons and in your name perform miracles? Now watch this. It's interesting that the Lord says that. These are people who are standing in front of him on judgment day, and though they're proclaiming that they did things in his name. 
Look at verse 23. And I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, who, you who practice lawlessness. Now, verse 22 says, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? If he says to them, I never knew you, could they prophesy in his name? No. There's no way they could. They're saying they did. And at the moment that they did it, they may have been saying that I am. But because he never knew them, never knew them, didn't know them and forgot them, didn't used to know them and no longer knows them, he never knew them. So whatever they said they was doing in the name of Christ, they could not have been doing truly in the name of Christ. Why? Because he never knew them. Now, remember the word I told you to hold on to is what? Bear. Okay, hold on to that word. Because here's the question. Is there a difference? Now, Sandra's Bible says produces. Is there a difference in bearing fruit and producing fruit? You say no? Okay. Is it anybody say yes? There? Bryce is shaking his head yes. Josh, is, you think there's a difference, Josh? You think there's a difference, Bryce? Anybody else say, no, there's no difference? Or Kendall says, no, there's no difference? Anybody? You, Keith says, yes, there's a difference. All right, we got, us, we got it going here now. Anybody else? Joey, you got a, got a dog in the fight? You, <laughs> you want to have, but you just, you just, just go say one or the other, Joey. You think it's the same? Okay. You think it's the same? Think it's the same. No difference. That could just come out of my head. That's why you couldn't find it. So the question is, is there a difference in bearing fruit and producing fruit? Now watch this, guys. What we just read back in Matthew 7. Matthew 7, right? 7. Let me get there. Matthew 7. Look at verse 22. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? They did produce something there, didn't they? In their own mind, they're producing. They're declaring. We, we prophesied. That's preaching. That's preaching. We preached in your name. Uh, we cast out demons in your name. We did it for you, Jesus. That's what they're saying, right? Uh, hey, we perform miracles in your name, Jesus. We did it for you, for your kingdom's sake. But what's Jesus' response to them? Guys, I never even knew you. I've never, ever have known you. Huh? Well, they said they did. No, there's the difference. Here's the difference. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Well, starting in verse 15 where that passage kind of, the context kind of picks up there, what does he call them? False prophets. Now, can a person be a false prophet and, and think they're right? Yeah, but most false prophets know they're wrong. Huh? These did. Well, I mean, I don't think they made this up. Watch this. In all of Scripture where the Lord... Yes, ma'am? Okay. We're, we're fishing to answer that. What are we talking about here, Sandra? I don't know. It was probably somewhere else. That is a holy Bible, though, Sandra. Watch this. Whenever the Lord uses the analogy about fruit in the life of a believer, he never uses the word produce. He always uses the word bear. Now, now watch this. Here, no, let's see. 
Where else did we go? Matthew 3. Matthew 3. The word, I think, is... No. No, it's... uh... Oh, it's here. It's here. Where we're at, Matthew 7. The word produce is used here in verses 18. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, nor can a bad tree produce good fruit. Okay, cool. But here's the point. The Lord always uses the word bear. He doesn't ever use the word produce. Uh, now, you, you may think, well, that word is interchangeable. And in our language, it is. It is in English language. But go back to, go back to uh, John 15, verse 4. You there say, man, abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. So neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I him, he bears much fruit. Producing fruit, to say uh, producing fruit is different than bearing fruit. Bearing fruit is God working through us. Notice what he says in verse 4. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit unless it abides in the vine. So neither you can unless you abide in me. So the word bear, and this is why the Lord uses that word bear, it's God working through us. See, the fruit that's, that's, that's bore in our lives is not something that we do. It's something that God does through us. Those in, in uh, Matthew 7 who the Lord didn't know, they were trying to produce things in the name of the Lord for whatever reason, even if they had a pure motive. It wasn't God working in them because if it was God working in them or through them, he could have never judged him the way he did, right? So to bear fruit is God working through us. To produce fruit is my working for God. Does that make sense? To bear fruit is God working through us. To produce fruit is us working for God. We don't work for God. God don't need us to work for him. Amen? He doesn't need anybody in here to work for him. But his vision for his kingdom is to work through us. Therefore, we bear fruit based on what the Holy Spirit is doing in us and through us, right? If I try to produce for God, I'll do it on my own and I'll do it without God. And that happens a lot. And God doesn't bless that. God blesses bearing fruit and God works through us. God never tells us to produce fruit. He always tells us to bear fruit. Some translations may use the word produce. But the correct terminology is to bear. God wants to work through us. He doesn't want us working for him. He doesn't need us to work for him. By the way, does God need us to be abiders so that he could fulfill his kingdom? That's how he sovereignly chose to do it. And he's going to bear fruit through us, through the working of the Holy Spirit. Matter of fact, he tells us here in chapter 15, verse 4, that We can't bear fruit without him. We can't bear fruit unless we abide in him and he abides in us. That's the only way fruit can be bore in our life. Kim? How do we know the difference? It always glorifies the Lord, for one thing. I don't think that's your idea. Would you have done that as an unbeliever? So now you are a follower of Christ, therefore you're indwelt by the Holy Spirit. What is causing you to bear that fruit? The Holy Spirit, yeah. So that's bearing fruit. Remember the guys back in Luke, not Luke, Matthew, Ricky. (laughs) Matthew 7, they did things in the name of Jesus. Matter of fact, They did big things. They cast out demons and they prophesied and they performed miracles. So they said, but God said, I don't even know you. 
Could that be fruit? Couldn't be. I don't think God's going to judge anyone for bearing fruit. The only way we bear fruit, guys, is through the indwelling Holy Spirit working through us. How many of you have, have met any unsafe people that are sharing the gospel? I, you know, we don't get any checks in the bucket to keep the lights on from unsafe folks or people who aren't coming to this church. You know, I never get a check from the VFW. I'm just saying, you know, uh, no one from Hollywood's ever wrote a check to the Cowboy Church or showed up for an event. Why do we do these things, guys? Because we're followers of Christ. We're indwelt by the Holy Spirit. That's how we bear fruit. We abide in him. So this is why the only type people that God will use to facilitate his kingdom are abiders because this is the only people that he can bear fruit through. And by bearing fruit through us, it proves that we are his disciple. Ephesians 2 8, Paul says, For it is by grace that we have been saved through faith, not of what works. If we're trying to be producers, that means we're working, trying to produce. That's not the way the kingdom works. God works through us as abiders and bears fruit through us. Remember what he says there right there in Matthew, in John 15, verse 4. If we don't abide in him, we don't what? We don't bear fruit. Yeah, it's not our fruit even though we bear it. When people say, man, how in the world did Cowboy Church get where it's at in 11 short years? In spite of us. There's your answer. In spite of us. I mean, look at your pastor. <laughs> but then look at the congregation. In spite of us, bore fruit. God bore fruit through us. We didn't produce this. Now, having said that, there is a lot of people that's put in a lot of sweat, blood, and tears here. But why did we do that? Because the Spirit drives us to do it. Right? Now, if you'll get this, it'll change your life. And... This word right here will really come to life for you. The fact that God only uses abiders, only to facilitate his kingdom. Because if you're not abiding in Christ, you cannot bear fruit. You know how many promises are made? <laughs> you know how many promises have been made to me about, from people who really had good intentions, but they never come through? That's not abiders. And I'm not trying to badmouth people. It's, it's biblical that people make promises and don't come through because they're not abiding in Christ. And the only way we bear fruit is how? We abide in him and he abides in us. Is that my ideal, by the way? No, it's what we just read in Scripture, chapter 15, verse 4 of, of John's gospel. When we abide in Christ, that means what? Abiding means to what? Remain. We remain in Christ. Christ remains in us, and we will bear fruit. All right, watch this. Go over to verse 16. Verse 16, chapter 15 in John. Very interesting verse. Same passage. Verse 16 says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you would go what? Bear fruit. You didn't choose me, I chose you that you would go and bear fruit. That's the plan, guys. Now, how many of you know there's churches are full of people that aren't bearing fruit? Sure it is. And we understand through the parables why it's that away. Our Lord told us it would be that away. But... Abiders, look, 
Abiders bear fruit. And by doing so, prove their disciples. That's what Scripture says, right? We don't produce fruit. Let, let me get you to look at it through another light. If we produce fruit for the kingdom, uh, we would be scoping people out, wouldn't we, to come be a part? Hey, man, let's, let's, uh, let's approach them about being part of Cowboy Church because they're producers. They get things done. Well, that ain't the way we, we build churches, is it? How do, how do churches get built? What did Acts 2.47 say? And the Lord did what to the church daily? Added. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. So you think you being here is accidental or happenstance or you just wandered into the place? No, God chose you to be here. Why? So you can be an abider. Why? So you can bear fruit. Why? So his kingdom will grow. His kingdom will move. Because these are the people. He doesn't choose producers. Again, if, if it was like that, wouldn't we be drafting people? Hey, Brother Tracy, look, you need to go see this guy. He can get it done. He would be a great... Hey, by the way, how many times have you heard this said? I've said it myself. Me and my wife has had conversations about people and said this, and it's really incorrect, but... Boy, if they would just get saved, they would be so wonderful in God's kingdom. They're so talented. Man, they're, they're great investors. They're great orators. They're, they're people, uh, people, people. They're workers. Man, they would be great for God's kingdom, but that ain't how it works, is it? We don't draft people. If we were looking for producers, we would, wouldn't we? And some we would say, hey, why don't you go down at Wynn Baptist instead of here because you're not, you're not really getting a lot done. Or why don't you go down at, uh, go down at the Methodist Church? They're looking for people like you. <laughs> Is that not true? Look, you guys played sports. Who you want on your team, a bunch of losers or a bunch of winners? Nobody, I mean, we're kind of losers, but... Who are we after? We're after the superstars. How, how, does, how does sports teams get their teams? They draft them. Yeah, and they trade around for number one picks and such. If we were looking for producers, man, that's the way we would do, right? I mean, if you're just looking for, probably if, if, if God's kingdom operated with producers, I'd probably be the first to go. You guys would be like, you know, Tracy, you've, you've done okay, and we like you and all, but man, this, this dude that, that, I, that I know, he, he can out preach you on his worst day. Trade me off quick. Thanks, Rick. Love you too, buddy. Trade me off quick. But it's not like that. It's not about producing. It's about abiding so that God can bear fruit through his people. That's why some of the most unexpecting people do so much in God's kingdom is because they abide in Christ and the Holy Spirit works through them to bear much fruit. How many of y'all grew up in churches that had Sunday school? I know most churches still have Sunday school, but we don't. How many of y'all remember a Sunday school teacher in your life? What's her name, Lauren? Their name, maybe a man. Miss Barbara. Who else? Give me a name, Linda. Aretha Martin. Give me a name, Miss Cindy. Oprah. Oprah. Opal Reed. Anybody else? Who? Alice Nichols. Why do you remember those people? They what? Did God bear fruit through them? Now, outside of church... Were these people superstars? Were they like big-time citizens that everybody knew and, uh, you know, they were on the Chamber of Commerce and the city council and all that? Possibly, but probably not. Probably they were ordinary moms and dads 
that were abiding in Christ, and God produced much fruit through them. Well, I agree with some of that. It is God's plan for uh, families to grow up in the fear and admonition of the Lord, and he does further his kingdom that way. But how many of those kids who are raised in church and know to do the right thing go south? Well, because they're not abiding in Christ, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So when, when it comes to fruit, remember, and, and probably tonight was for me, to be honest with you. Because if we're not careful, when we start thinking about fruit, we can get critical. Because we may think that fruit, as Josh said, is, is, is doing something. We may think fruit is producing the fruits of the Spirit, and some of y'all's answers were from Galatians chapter 5, which is the fruits of the Spirit. It's love, peace, patience. All of those things is produced. How many of y'all, since you got saved, or it's easier to be around you than it used to be? Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you for being honest. It's easier to be around you since you come to Christ and the Holy Spirit's moved into your life. You're not as quite as grouchy and irritable and self-centered and just downright mean. That's the fruit of the Spirit in your life. And uh, when we talk about, uh, when we read John chapter 15 and we say, or we hear Jesus say, abide in me and I'll abide in you and you'll produce much fruit. And look, you didn't choose me, I chose you. For the purpose of bearing much fruit. In other words, I want to work through you to bear fruit. You can't do it without me. I can do it without you. I mean, y'all know that. We can't do it without God. But God can do it without us, right? Were we here when he spoke the world into existence? Remember the conversation he had with Job? Where were you when I created the behemoth and the other word he uses, I can't pronounce. Where were you when I were doing, when I flung the stars into heaven? Where were you at, Job? Well, he wasn't here. See, God don't need us. God can do anything he wants without us. But lest we abide in Christ, we can do nothing. Why did Corey and Logan spend a week of their life going to a place so desolate? Would you say that's kind of a... Did you sense the sense? Did you get the sense, Logan, of hopelessness on the res? Why in the world would you go there? You're an abider. And God's bearing fruit through you. Now, there's more people in here than didn't go. Does that mean that y'all are not bearing fruit? No, sure don't. But if we're not careful, again, this is probably for me. If we're not careful, we'll look at those missionaries and say, there's your fruit. Or it could be a faithful teacher in that kid's barn that's teaching a child who will grow up to be a full-time missionary. Where's the fruit? They're bearing it big time over there. God's bearing fruit through them. Amen or not? Have I made any sense at all tonight? Good, amen, because the Lord wants us to understand. Sandra, are you going to sell that Bible? <laughs> just, just pick it on your sister. Nothing wrong with that Bible. Well, hello, everybody. My name is Tracy Wilson. Thank you so much for being with us uh, via Facebook or YouTube or however you're watching us, whether it be a Wednesday night round pen or a Sunday morning uh, service here at the Cowboy Church. Just wanted to say hello and give you a personal invite to come and be with us here at the Cowboy Church. Uh, there's three options for you. Sunday mornings, we have a 9 a.m. service, uh, and then a second service at 10.30 a.m. And then on Wednesday nights, uh, we do what we call a round pin Bible study, which is just getting into the heart of God's Word and studying it for all it's worth. We would love to meet with you uh, here in person at the Cowboy Church. We're so thankful for uh, technology. We've gotten uh, comments on our uh, sermons and Bible studies uh, all the way from Africa. And so we're so thankful. But uh, we do want to invite you here with us uh, to be uh, in person, in-house at the Cowboy Church. 
You know, the Bible says this about salvation. The Bible says clearly in Ephesians 2, 8, that salvation is by grace through faith, not of works, so no man can boast. Our prayer is that through these messages and through these Bible studies, uh, that the Word of God would uh, find its place in your heart. The promise is that God's Word will not return void. So we want to make ourselves available to you uh, for any thing that we can do to help you. If you have questions about this Jesus that we preach about, this Jesus that we serve, this Jesus that we know as our Savior and that the Bible declares as the only Savior, He is the way, the truth, and the life. If you would have a question about that, if we could help you with that, or if God deals with your heart through one of our sermons or Bible studies, and you've responded to that, and you've put your hope and trust and you've committed to follow Jesus Christ. We would love to celebrate with you about that. We'd love to talk with you about that, help you in any way that we can. If you're watching, then obviously you have Facebook or uh, the availability of YouTube. Uh, if we can do anything, I would love for you to personally message me on Facebook. And I would love to correspond with you about this. God is able and He is able to meet all of our needs. He has extended His grace to us uh, through the offer of forgiveness of our sins and eternal life. I hope that you have taken advantage of that. I hope that you belong to Christ. And please take advantage of Three Trees Cowboy Church. Being here in person or just allowing us to message with you and help you in any way we can. Until then, until we see you in person or we see that message, God bless you and thank you for being with us.